On the tube, customers are at breaking point at Brixton. Basically, it feels like this station will never, ever, ever be finished. And Jason has a surprise visitor. Into Canary Wharf Station. I think I need a cigarette now. <laughs> In London, you're never far from a tube station. As diverse as London itself, the underground's 275 stations range from sleepy suburban havens to frantic hives of activity. With anything between one person to 28,000 people an hour passing through the stations, life for the staff can be unpredictable and hectic. At Brixton Station, one of the busiest on the underground, they have their own particular problems to contend with. Concerts at the legendary Brixton Academy present their own challenges to station supervisor Monty Montiero. When there's a concert, you find that you'll have um, probably about five or six ticket outs on the booking hall. They will also operate downstairs on the platform. As you can see, people are now starting to come to the cross passage and they are uh, advertising that they got tickets to sell. Mandy Sahota has been working at Brixton as a station assistant for two and a half years. It is quite a rough station, do get a lot of abuse. People tend to be rude and you do get a lot of people who obviously they want to throw punches, meet you after work, do this, do that, but that's just life, you do get some arrogant people. Monty has developed a thick skin when dealing with troublesome ticket touts. Could you do us a favour please and make your way upstairs? Yeah, Frankie, can you send a BTP downstairs, British Transport Police, because I've been given the ring around downstairs? Platform one, will you make your way up uh, out of the station? Uh, you're not driving here, you make out the station. If you don't leave the station, the transport police will arrest you. That's fine, we wait until the police comes down, yeah? Why are you driving people mad, though? I'm asking you very politely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, come upstairs. He's not going to go anywhere. Some of them get very aggressive. Of course, if they have something to drink, it's, you know, always leave plenty of space between yourself and the person you're asking to, uh, you know, move. Because otherwise, if you turn your arm's length, you'll probably end up getting thumped. But touts are only one of Brixton's worries. The station's £26 million overhaul and renovations over the past four years have been dogged with problems. The main staircase has had to be completely rebuilt. Then they found that the ceiling of the ticket hall was contaminated with asbestos. And because of power problems, they still can't turn on their newly installed escalator. From a porter cabin behind the station, group station manager Paul Jessett is overseeing the project. There, there are times when, when, when we all, we're all tearing our hair out and we all think, oh, when is this going to end? I thought it would be over in two and a half to three years, but unfortunately we're still here four and a half years later. A little update there, madam, on how we're doing with the project. I spend quite a lot of time downstairs just talking to people when they come through and they just want to kill me and throw me down the escalator that's not open. So I take the ups and the downs. It uh, goes, goes with the territory. So when's it going to finish? There's a little leaflet there with a few bullet points on there, which right. may be helpful for you. Or OK, you well, want... that's the main problem. Yeah. Basically, it feels it's like problem. this station will never, yep. ever, ever be finished. Oh, no. That's okay. how I that's feel. That's the issue. Yeah. We really are coming to the end of it now. All right, well, you know, seeing is believing. OK. That wasn't too bad. <laughs> I got away with that lightly. At London Underground's flagship station, Canary Wharf, it's a very different story. You walk into a station like Canary Wharf, 
and you're in complete awe the sheer size and scale of it. If you look at all the underground stations, you can consider them as churches. Canary Wharf is the cathedral. The responsibility for serving the fastest growing financial district in the world falls on the shoulders of 31-year-old Irishman Jason Collins. I'm proud, I'm very proud of the station, I love it. And uh, I love the hustle, the hustle and bustle. And uh, when things go wrong as well, you know, a lot of people, you know, tend to get stressed out. To me, that's the, most, that's the time when I most enjoy the job. And the next week will be very stressful for Jason. Although half of his station is already in use, the east end of the station has never seen a passenger. Hidden from public view are three new entrances and nine new escalators, which the mayor, Ken Livingston, is coming to open in just a few days. With a lot of the work still unfinished, Jason's deadline is looming fast. There's the time factor, the financial factor, and also the corporate pressure factor. So um, there's very little room for our... I've had, what, two days off in the last six weeks? The corporate investors are bearing down on him. The new Barclays Bank headquarters is ready to open at the end of the month. We're going to have 6,000 people starting work in that building, the first of which are from a couple of weeks' time. So, as you can see, that's one of the main reasons why it's so crucial to get this end of the station open. We've got to get our act together, and if we don't open up in time for Barclays, I'm sure Mr. Barclay himself will be uh, pretty upset at us. Uh, and I'm sure my governor will have a thing or two to say about it. That's 36 stories of pressure, and you feel it. At Brixton, they too are feeling the pressure. But station supervisor Monty has little faith in the system. Well, they said they're going to do something next week. I always say, which week though? It's always which week, it's never next week. Uh, for some reason with London Underground, it seems that it takes much longer to get something done. The problem that we've got is that we've got a very busy station. We had two escalators with a fixed stair in the middle. And we've put everybody out for the best part of two and a half years. But what we've given them back is two escalators with a fixed stair in the middle. This is our famous escalator, being used at the moment as a fixed stair. The uh, reason why it's been used as a fixed stair is because we still haven't got enough power to run it. Once it gets a power supply, it'll run. Is that dog fit enough to go all the way up the stairs? Here, I'll take the stairs, you take the dog. Oh, I like this. No, I've got to take the dog up. <laughs> Come on. That's safety. Come on. This is called animal safety, animal security. The things I've got to, got to do for the underground, I don't know. The broken escalator just makes life harder for staff. Monty has bet his boss six cans of coke that it'll never be finished in time. I still got that. Uh, We've got to test it. I still got that six cans cook uh, that you'll run by six hundred in a month. Six cans of cook you're going to buy me? <laughs> nah. I'm sure that my six cooks are safe. I haven't lost one yet, anyway. But Brixton is not beyond repair. Aldwych is one of the underground's 43 abandoned stations. It was closed in 1994 for two main reasons. Number one, a small number of people using the service, and secondly, the lifts need several million pounds to put back in working order. Barry Wilkinson has been looking after Aldwych for five years. <laughs> the only access now is by a long spiral staircase. No one enjoys going up and down the stairs. <laughs> Right, so if we carry on down here. I'm showing a couple of film people from London Weekend Television who are interested in seeing the aspects of the station that are connected with the Blitz. Right, there are originally two platforms here. This platform down here during the war would have been used for people sheltering from the Blitz. The other platform, it's our understanding that that was used for the storage of various treasures, possibly including the Elgin marbles. It was um, built, we think, for the theatre traffic, but was obviously wildly too much, even in those days. Um, there being other stations very nearby. So this didn't last very long at all, a matter of about eight or nine years. Now, I personally can always imagine um, 
something horrible coming down there, like in a horror film. <laughs> The station was built on the site of a theatre and allegedly the leading lady of the theatre haunts it down here. I've never encountered or, or experienced anything, but uh, I have heard stories of people who have. With Ken Livingstone coming to open the east end of Canary Wharf Station in just four days, Jason is gearing himself up for the final safety inspections. You, you cleaned the glass on the, on the inside? Tomorrow we got the visit uh, by our two different sets of inspectors. They'll come around, they'll inspect every single area. If I don't manage to satisfy the inspectors, well, the actual opening date will have to be put back. Sorry. Cheers. There's very little room for our... If one escalator here at the entrance uh, to the new end of the station becomes unavailable, opening is not an option. And uh, my job's on the line. So uh, at this stage, the next 24 hours are absolutely crucial. There is one big problem they face, the new gate line. We've got a software uh, problem that's preventing these gates from operating the way they should. And uh, if they're not operating the way they should, we've uh, got an issue. We need our gates fully functional, fully operational, so we can introduce crowd control. Um, if we don't have them working uh, for the inspectors tomorrow, I'm going to have some serious explaining to do. Failure is not an option. <laughs> Canary Wharf, the railway inspectorate are about to arrive, and although the problem with the gate line has been resolved, there's lots of unfinished work. Group station manager Jason Collins is not happy. As you can see behind me, we've still got hazard tape around, and we've got no entry signs. Uh, we've got areas without doors on it. We've got a huge cradle machine uh, stored here, which isn't satisfactory. This is going to be a public area within a few days. If I was a railway inspector coming on to see a complete station, I wouldn't be very happy. If it doesn't go well today, well, next Monday it could be looking a distant dream, but the next few hours are going to be very crucial. After four hours of inspections, they finally break the news to Jason. Right up, boys. Consent. For trial ops. Okay, we got permission. Oh, Next Monday, boys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Superb. Brilliant. You know, hasn't quite sunk in yet. Maybe after I play a bit of basketball this evening, I'll have a drink. <laughs> Just celebrate. <laughs> At Brixton, the predicted date for the opening of the new escalator has been and gone. Fix the new escalator. I've been waiting for two years. 31st of March. 31st of March. Not guaranteed, of course. Like I said before, anything is impossible or possible. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Thank you. You're a gentleman. I don't like giving it to you. It means I'm wrong. Another uh, three weeks. I've got, I got my cooks. Six cans of cooks. Three weeks and it'll be in service. And if it's not, I'm not giving you well, another six cans. <laughs> no. Barry Wilkinson's disused underground station is about to be host to a private party organized by a photographic agency. People who are coming are actually really excited to come because they haven't been in the station for ages. So they all want to see what it looks like and has it changed. I think this is Barry's second home. He really has an attachment to it. This type of event is superb because it's a cultural event. Um, we've also had the production of plays on, also things like book launches, and believe it or not, I've even had one wedding, wedding reception here and another one coming fairly soon. Excellent, isn't it? Particularly that one with the pilgrims at Mecca. Yes, I think that's superb. That gentleman's somewhat recognisable, I suppose. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm not sure who some of, the, some of these young ladies are.
the party at Aldwych goes on into the night. But at the end of the Victoria Line at Brixton, the staff have to cope when drunken passengers fall asleep on the trains. We all have different techniques. We usually like, nudge them on their feet to sort of wake them up. Once he sort of just pinches them, does a little pinch on the ear and they sort of like wake up in a shock. Aha! Sleepy beauties. Hello! Hello! Wakey! Mm, nice and asleep. Wait, wake up, wake up, wake up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. You wake yet? Come on. Hey, sleepy beauty. Come on. Wake up, you're holding up the train. Come on, come on. Hey, come on. Wake up. Here you go, open up. Out you go. Yeah, no way, no way. You go and get a bit of fresh air, and then if you're all right. Yeah, you go hold yourself, hold yourself. Come on. Okay, good, good night, good night. Good night. What I always say to people is you shouldn't really travel if you're that drunk. Don't get that bad unless you're with a group of people. Because a lot of the time, there are regular pickpockets that do travel the trains. And they will get their hands on your stuff, especially when they see you like that. We finished at about 20 past six this morning, um, just getting the last infill done and stuff. Um, but uh, all in all, uh, very, very happy. Today, Jason Collins is host to a station full of dignitaries and top brass from London Underground. I'm Jason Collins, group station manager. Nice to meet you at last. How's things? Even the managing director, Tim O'Toole, is close at hand. Yeah. Excuse me, Jason. I just want to tell you what a great job you've done. Cheers, Sam. Really thanks, spectacular. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot. Gives yeah. people a lot of confidence. Yeah, cheers, so well. First money we say. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Yeah, I think I need a cigarette now. Yeah. <laughs> They're awaiting the opening of the east end of the station by the Mayor of London, Ken Livingston. How do you, Mr. Mayor? Nice and very welcome to Canary Wharf Station. I hope it's not going to get too windy now. Both entrances are open. During the winter, we notice it now with the During the winter, they can all have long johns paid for by underground. There we go. You heard it first here. The mayor will open the station by starting one of the new escalators. So far, so good. Just everything seems to be going okay. But let's just hope the escalator starts now. That's the main thing. At Brixton, the day has finally come to get their new escalator moving. It's the culmination of a two and a half year wait for Paul Jessett. We're on the eve of actually switching it on and uh, letting the customers use it for the first time. I can't believe it. It seems to have taken an age. I've actually got butterflies. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a landmark it's a day. Look at all these people waiting to use it. And I'd like to just simply say thank you to everyone who's worked to get this done, to do it on time. I'm delighted to be here and formally declare the eastern end of the station open. Now I'm hoping it will work when I turn. <laughs> Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's reality. <laughs> now we're actually open. I'm Jason Collins, Group Station Manager. You're very welcome. Okay, thank you. How are you doing, sir? Cheers. Well done. Well done. Let's go, folks. Station Toronto. We got a station Toronto. Yes. So, back to day-to-day -day business, which should be good. I've forgotten how to do this, I'll just put it in there. The key doesn't fit, Steve. 
Oh, no. <laughs> Have you been trying on this? <laughs> Oh, look at that. Never thought I'd see it happen. There we go. Number two's up and running. And I'm going to go and get on it. Oh, wonderful. Have your tea off of this. <laughs> Absolutely. See the look of satisfaction on her face. <laughs> so, all is well at Brixton and everything looking good for the future. After four years of problems and misery, it seems the end is finally in sight. Or is it? Only a week later, escalator number three gives up the ghost. It's disappointing to see that we haven't got um, all three running, but we, at least we had the three running for a week. For Monty, it's just another cross he has to bear. And we're back to two escalators again. That's something that is always going to happen on the underground. And after 28 years, you get used to it. Next time, the heat is on for the Piccadilly line engineers. Good for making the toasty sandwiches on when you bring your lunch up. And there's a bomb scare at Cockfosters. I'm not happy with it. I'm just thinking about the current climate and, and, and what recent events in Iraq. Tonight at 8 over on Sky Rule Lives, with new terminal rules in place, the temperature's rising in airlines.